idea of, of what it feels like, man, to be back in front of the crowd. You know, they're out there chanting your name, everybody's sticking around, taking a picture. What's, what's that feel like? Oh, for man. You, you know, I, I'm, I'm back. It's been so long. But as soon as they come out, I feel them. They feel me. I feed off of them. They're everything. That's why I'm back. You know, I, I, I'm back. I do love the confrontation, all that stuff, but I love the fans. That's why I'm here. Very cool. Talk about your workout today, man. A lot different than the last time we saw you in the cage, man. The movement, the flow that you had. Was that a little tease of, of what we're going to see on Sunday night, or were you just out there having a little fun? Oh, yeah. No, that, that's what I've been doing every week. I spar three days a week, and uh, that's what it is. Just I've been fighting every day, and you know, a lot of people ask me a lot of things. Why do you do this? Why do you do that? I don't know, but I know how to fix it. Easy. Very nice. Give, give, can you give us an update on the weight and, and how you're feeling right now? Right, where now you're at? right now, I'm 149 pounds, so we just got to pull off the rest and uh, see everybody in the morning. Has it been easier this time than the last time? Definitely been easier. I think uh, now that I'm 38, I uh, prepare more in advance. You know, before it was just everything raw, everything last minute, and uh, I feel fine. Can you give us an update on your brother? It seemed like he got in a little trouble. Is he able to be here now and he's going to be able to help you out? Uh, he's over there. You can ask him. He's right there. <laughs> <laughs> I guess a lot of people when they heard that you were coming back just thought, you know, why are you doing this? What do you have left to prove? What do you think you still want to accomplish? Mm -hmm. You know what? I really do. I love fighting. I love standing in front of somebody and let's go, let's go, man, let's go. I love that stuff and I love all these people out here. I forgot this this half. I just started just doing the, the fighting part. This is the other half. I love this. Can't, I'm so happy I'm here. And what, what goals do you still have for yourself in the sport? Uh, first goal, 145 pound world champ. After that, you know, sit down with the family and friends and trainers and talk talk about what's what's next. Right now, Las Vegas has you as the heaviest underdog I think they've ever had you for any UFC fight in your entire career. Do you feel like people are discounting you at this point? Oh, man. First thing you got to do is go drain your bank account, put all your money on me. <laughs> First thing you got to do right now. Um, I'm fighting it. You know, everybody, uh, you know, they, I don't blame them. Let's just start there. I don't blame them. I've had some bad fights. Maybe I'm supposed to be one of the most well-known fighters there are. Of course, all the hardcores love me. But, uh. I did. I've made some mistakes in the past, and uh, you know it's time to come back and fix what we can. Should people, do, do you feel like people should not count, like discount, and, and almost throw away that last fight with Frankie? Just with, it seemed like you made some changes with your style and everything like that. Well, I, I hope uh, I hope my opponent discounts me. You know, I hope my opponent uh, watches the last tape and say, "Oh, we got to beat that guy." So uh, you know, but but other people, you know, I, I I can't speak now. I just I can only speak after the fight. What do you think about him as an opponent? I think he's a great opponent. He's a perfect example of the new school. Uh, it's a much different, uh, different people, uh, different uh, group of group of people in the sport today. And uh, yeah, just a lot of respect. But uh, we're here to do our thing. It seems pretty obvious if you look at matchmaking that the UFC wants to build him, and they're like, "Wow, we can build him by using BJ Penn's name and, and kind of springboard." I mean, it seems like that's. That was the match that made you feel that way, and, and what do you think about that? You, you know what's funny is uh, every time I was doing interviews while I, while I was training, it was always like Latin interviews and Spanish interviews, and I was like, "Oh, you guys think he's gonna win or something? <laughs> what's this all about?" But uh, I, I, uh, like, like I said, it, you know, sometimes people don't lose faith in you, and uh, him and his manager, I guess they saw me working out at the gym, maybe heard uh, BJ's not too good when I first came back the first week after being out for being out for two weeks, but. The manager, I don't know your name, but you must not follow history too much because every time BJ Penn gets embarrassed, he comes back 10 times better. So you should have thought about that before you asked for this fight. Have you, have you uh, run into Yair at all throughout this week? And if so, how has the exchange been? Yeah, I've seen him, but uh, we got nothing to talk about. You know, we're not friends. You wanted this fight. I don't like him or dislike him, but I'm not going to forget that he asked for this. You just mentioned every time you've been embarrassed. You, you, did you feel embarrassed by that performance against Frankie? Weren't you embarrassed for me? <laughs> you saw me crying after? I was embarrassed, yeah. And I was embarrassed after the GSP fight, and I was embarrassed after I lost to Jens Pulver and had the draw with Uno, and uh, it's time to make more, one more run. How big of a difference is training at uh, Greg Jackson's gym made? Oh man, that was monumental to where I am right now. Monumental training with Greg. Uh, just wonderful person to be around. I thought I was crazy, he's crazy. <laughs> He's nuts. You, he acts quiet, but he's not. Do you feel like you wish he had done it sooner, or do you just feel like it's the right time? Or you know what? When the student is ready, the master will appear. You know what I mean? So uh, it's uh, it's just part of the game. I, I wouldn't have been ready. Wouldn't have been ready.
So what was it after you retired? What was it that brought you back? You know, first I, was, I, I wasn't watching any fights. I didn't even look at the uh, UFC for a year and a half. And I remember sitting down and it was it was Verdum and Hunt and I'm like, one's 39 and one's 40 and I'm, and I'm 36, 37. I'm like, what? What excuse could I possibly come up with to not go in the ring? Because I always kept myself out of the gym because I get such good results. I knew I would be back in the gym. And it was, you know, it was a no-brainer at that point. I'm like, I love this stuff. I got to get in. Something's missing. What did Dana say? When, when, did you call him? Or? You know, I texted Dana. I said, Dana, I want to fight again. I want to show everybody who the real... Uh, who the real hero in the UFC is, and he texts me back, are you crazy? Are you crazy, BJ? I go, no, I'm not crazy, I'm ready. So, uh, you know, here we are today. We see you out here with Jason. How much work were you able to get in with him? Me, and, to this? me and Jason worked out a ton for this fight, and, and even for the fight before. We, we uh, got together and we started doing a bunch of stuff, so been going back and forth with Jason and Greg Jackson and Mike Winkle John. Is that a setup that you kind of almost wish that you would have done earlier in your career, this kind of getting to these big camps and these big game coaches? You know, um, like, like uh, I wasn't ready at that time, but, uh, you know, it's just me and Jason known each other so long. When you know each other so long and become friends, you stop listening to each other, and uh, that's part of the game. But you come back at an age like this and, like, okay. I, so even if he's like, hey, man, that's a good place to eat, I listen. Really, huh? Okay, I'll go try it. <laughs> you know, so people don't just speak to waste their breath, especially especially when they get older. Yeah. How are you feeling at, at 145 being the second time now? Uh, I, I, feel, I feel good. I feel really good. I've been walking around at 157, 158 all year. And, uh, yeah, it's just, just you know, I, I'm not, not going to sit here and say, this is my real weight, this is my real weight. Anybody who says that, I... I think no, your real weight is the one you do the best at. So we're gonna we're gonna go find out. So you this feel is like your... much easier the second time. Oh, much easier the second time going into this. This is, this is gonna be your first time doing the early weigh-ins where it's there in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, have you had to make any adjustments for that? You know what? I it was really on my mind. Like man, we gotta weigh in much earlier and this and that. So I am making adjustments. You know, we gotta maybe pull down a little bit tonight and see what happens in the morning. See where we gotta take it from there. It, it seems like while you were retired, that last fight kind of weighed on you a little bit. You thought about the, the fighting against Edgar, you know, while you were, as you were sitting out. Mm -hmm. is it, have you thought about how you want to go out? I mean, do you want to go out on the great weight and kind of walk away on top? Or is there a time where you, you'd have a fight and you said, well, I just don't have it anymore? I mean, have you thought about that at all? Well, a thousand times I've, I've thought I don't have it anymore. You know what I mean? Uh, just when you lose a fight, that's just natural, natural fighting. But uh, I don't think, oh, this is how I want to go out. I just see something, I see a goal, and I just try to run as fast as I can towards it. Obviously, Sunday is probably going to have a big, you know, difference on how you feel. But it seems right now you're enjoying the moment. Is that safe to say? I'm definitely enjoying this. I'm very comfortable. I got a lot of experience, and uh, as I get older, the experience lets me settle in. And you know, this is it, this is almost like something new. You know, uh, see me when everybody yawns, it means they're nervous, right? So, you know, I, I I'm I'm glad I'm here. I'm good because the last. Ten years, I haven't been nervous. I don't even train for the fight. I walk in, uh, like I'm like, that's right. Why is my trainer more nervous than me? <laughs> you know, and and uh, it's it's good. It's very exciting. It's been a while, you know, since you've been fighting, and the sport's been going through some changes right now. Uh, what are your thoughts of, of the changes that have been happening? Like like today, Dana uh, mentioned that uh, he would give 25 million to Mayweather and the and the Connor for fighting in a boxing match. Um, I think I think it's amazing. I think it's amazing the, where the sport's headed. <coughs> I think it's amazing where the sport's headed, and uh, you know Dana's loosening up, obviously, right? And, and he's interested, and uh, it's it's very exciting. That's I never heard that before, so that's exciting to hear stuff like that.